Hey everyone, Schweik here. Welcome to Synthetic 2 and your first steps in modding. So with Synthetic 2 we, we did everything from scratch. Um, new engine, entirely new code base, new networking, everything. And uh, we were in a unique position to be able to do that. Um, it took a lot of thinking, a lot of engineering, a lot of time. But now we have our new framework, which is on top of the engine. So the new universe editor, universe edit, short. Um, and the universe edit is a set of tools that um, allows you to create almost uh, much of the content, uh, just like we do, from inside the game. It's the same stuff we use ourselves is very powerful and very easy to use and you don't need to install any crap uh, on your computer go to complex things you don't need to be a developer to use it it's very convenient and um, allows unending things we didn't even think of so um, but keep in mind it's still pre-alpha it might be laggy it is a bit buggy sometimes uh, some things don't exist which you might want to do uh, but it will be improved and extended. But there's already a an, an great amount of stuff that, is, that can be done. And actually what is enabled right now is our action editor, which allows you to make items, perks, abilities, buffs, debuffs, pickups probably, all these kind of things and more. And um, by using a modular um, system out of conditions and then getting a result. It's very simple. Anyone can do it. Uh, you don't need any programming, developing knowledge. So give it a try. And actually, we actually enabled class modding, so you can make your own custom class based on these abilities and, and buffs and whatever. So Venant will run you to this with some examples in actions and a custom class. Have fun. Welcome to Synthetic 2. Glad you could join us. In this video, I'll be doing a short overview of the Universe Editor and a demonstration of how modding works in Synthetic 2. If you have questions or feedback, you can drop us a comment on SyntheticUniverse.com or join our Discord server. You'll find all of these links below in the video description. Let's get to it. So Synthetic 2 supports modding natively through the Universe Editor. This means you don't have to download any third-party software or do anything complicated to get into modding. You can simply do it from the main menu by selecting modding here. This will take you to the editor where you can edit stuff. For the purposes of this video, I will be creating a class, an ability for that class, and a perk. Now, before I explain what actions are and what player classes are, I will show how the current menu looks and how it would look in the end. So you guys have a clear idea of what we're doing. So if we were to swap here our play classes, we see here the Riot Guard, the Chrono Trooper, one config that wasn't meant to be here. And here is where a new class will appear once we complete it. So let's get into that. We're gonna go back here to Hub and go back into Modding. So if I want to create a player class, I'll simply click player class, click here, either double click or create new player class config. Once inside, if I want my configuration to appear inside the game, I will mark this as finished. You always want to give your config a name, otherwise your changes will not be saved or you risk losing them completely. So we're gonna give this config a nice little name we're gonna call it chat destroyer of bots. And this at the top is how it will appear in the editor. And in the game, this is how it will appear in English. This really helps with localization as, as you can see here, there's German text, Spanish text, and much more will come in the future. You can also add a description, a secondary description, but I'll leave that to you. That's out of the scope for this video. After adding these things, we're going to add a faction. You can ignore the archetype for now. This is a redundant feature currently. 
we're going to go and assign a faction. Right now, the only faction inside of the game is the police faction. So that's the faction we will assign. After assigning a faction, we'll assign a sub-faction. Let's say SWAT. Why not? And here we will add the class's abilities. So just like the Chrono Trooper has a teleport, just like the Riot Guard has a stun dash, we can add abilities here. So this will fill up the entire, the entire four slots that the class has. And we can search here for actions. But right now, we don't want to assign any as we're going to do our own actions. Mobility is where you'll assign the mobility action. This is the dash or the teleport skill, for example. But you can also add it here in abilities. In the future, we will be producing much more thorough documentation so that the universe editor is a lot simpler for you guys to use. After this, we would add the perks at certain levels. We also want to create our own perks, so we will live, leave this blank for now. After this, we want to add the weapons for a class. When you select the class, you have the choice between two, three, maybe even four weapons at the beginning of the game. Here is where we assign those weapons. For the Steam demo, you cannot create your own weapons, so we'll assign some already created weapons here. Let's see, what do we want? I guess I'll go with the Judge Revolver, and let's see, let's see. Hmm. How about the MP70 Marrow? That's a good one. Okay, after doing this, we can assign a model. These models here are every single model we have in the game. So you can even choose an enemy inside of the game. Let's do that. Let's choose the sniper since I'm a big lover of snipers. Safe slot image is how the image appears after you saved. We can put a custom one in. Riot Trooper or Chrono Trooper. I'm going to choose the Chrono Trooper one to make this video as concise and short as possible. Class icon, same idea. We're going to choose the Chrono Trooper. No, actually, we're going to choose the Engineer. And the class color hex is just a nice theme with the color. Okay, creating a class is as easy as this. Of course, we're missing our abilities and our perks but we will be doing those shortly, coming back here and assigning them, and assigning them, assigning them correctly, okay? <laughs> okay, so let's check how this looks like in the game. We go to class, we swap, we would create a new save. Oh, and look at him there, the sniper model that we set, the engineer icon, and he's Chad, Destroyer of Bots. Perfect. But as you can see, we have no abilities and no perks. Unlike the Riot Guard, for example. You can see his four abilities here. So let's do that now. Back to Hub and back to modding. Actions can be various things within Synthetic. An action can be an item, a buff, an ability, a perk, a weapon attachment, a weapon upgrade, etc., etc. It's anything you can dream of, honestly. For that, we've made this very, very, very modular, and it has a lot of interesting things you can play with. We're not going to cover all of them in this video, as then the video would be three hours long. We're just going to give you a short overview of it. So we mark this config as finished. We give it a name, such as um let's say commenting or based aura let's make this the perk we'll call this the based aura we can add a description a secondary description as usual but we're not interested in that for now we want to choose perk because this is a perk in the game do we want to hide the action in the ui no we don't the technology, we're going to leave it blank for now. We don't need to assign a rarity. 
since it's going to be a perk that we're going to start with. And the action slot is something very important. It shows where it appears in the UI. If you were to choose ability here, this would appear in your ability slots and block them from containing anything else. So it's important that you choose the same action slot as you do the category. We can assign an icon here. Um, let's go for overdrive one. We'll see what that is. And again, guys, all of this will be improved in the future. Here for the icons, we have something in development where you will be able to see the icon right here next to the name. So it won't be as ambiguous and you'll have a much easier time selecting these things. We can set up an archetype for this, but we don't really want to, or we'll actually assign core perk. We can make it so that this action scales with anything in the game. For example, it could scale with luck, it could scale with healing done, healing gain, and much more. We're gonna leave it at max health for now. Let's say that the rate at which is it's gonna scale with this is 50%. Okay, now, like I said, I'm not gonna cover everything because look at this, but the most important things to know here is the base power and the cooldown speed. The base power multiplies the power of the action, so the values, and the cooldown speed is how fast the action cools down. You have many more things here, such as charges, stacks, no cooldown chance, double occurrence chance, triple occurrence, like multicasting. You have the buff duration, the debuff resistance. It's crazy. That's all I'm going to say. So since it's an aura, we do not, we do not need a cooldown here. We're going to leave all of this blank here, not touch it at all, all of this blank as well. And here at the end are some important things that we always want to tick. So we don't want to hide it in the action bar. It's not a debuff. You can use it while stunned. It's a perk, it's passive, it works all the time. It has a unique pipeline. What does that mean? It means that it doesn't conflict with other items in its cooldown. We remove the results on entity death, but it doesn't really matter, right? Because if we die, it's removed anyways. This is a lot more important for AI and enemies. Placeable object indicator? No, it's not placeable. Okay, perfect. So we're done with the left-hand side. Now let's go to the right. We need to choose the action path type first. I'll explain these five briefly, but in the future, like I've said, we'll be adding documentation so it's much more comprehensible. No condition passive is a passive that will always work, doesn't matter what conditions it has. No condition one use is something that only happens one and afterwards it gets removed. So the action only happens once such as a buff, for example. You pick up a buff, it happens for five seconds, and then it disappears. Trigger input is where it requires input from the player. And now we arrive to the two more complex ones, trigger condition and passive condition. Trigger condition is anything that is active, that happens actively, like getting hit, for example. Passive condition, on the other hand, checks for things that constantly happen in the game passively, such as, let's say, if your health value is 50, that would be a passive condition. These operands need to be correct and match with the type of action path type we assign here. So for example, if we assign a get critical hit operand, this would mean if we get a critical hit success, this would hit trigger here but this wouldn't actually work because of the action path type we have here. It's a no condition passive. This would just ignore this and go to this here and it would always work. And getting a critical hit is a trigger condition. It's something that actively happens. So you shoot and when you get that hit, something active, this triggers the condition here. But like I said, we're doing a perk first. So that this is gonna be a constant, true equals true. No condition passive. It's gonna ignore charges, ignore cooldown, and it has a no challenging, no channeling duration. Perfect. So, we ha you have the action conditions and you have the action results. 
action results influence something about the world or your character or it can be anything really anything that's written here so like i said i'm not going to cover everything but if you look through this list you'll find something that you love and maybe that you like to put into the game so we want to modify a stat with this action result since it's a perk we'll give it no duration because it's constantly being assigned since it's a no condition passive. The target is going to be ourselves. You can assign other targets, of course, all friendlies, all enemies, all entities, etc., etc. But we're gonna leave it at ourselves. Oh, and if you were to select another entity or enemies, for example, you can say enemies in range five, 54, I guess, for example. But we'll leave it itself for now. Stats to modify. Now this is where the fun starts. Again, I'm not gonna cover everything, but look at how many things there are. You have all the control in the world here to change the game as you see fit. So for Chad, I'm going to change his health. Regeneration to be 100. So another explanation here. These changes, mod, is a modification on the original percent or on the original value. So if you were to put 0 0.5 here, that would modify the original value by 50% positively. If I put 100 here, this would add itself to the original value. Something that is interesting to know is that modifiers stack with each other additively, not multiplicatively. So if you have a negative modifier somewhere else, it won't cause the rest of your stuff to be negative. It will simply be added to the rest of the modifiers. Okay, so we're gonna give him that perk, health regeneration 100, and we're gonna say show particles. I'm gonna leave this again duration zero because it's something that we want to repeat forever. And we're gonna assign, what do we want to assign? I guess a boost, a damage boost, the visual of a damage boost, because it looks like something Chad would do. You can scale this by the entity model size if you want, but I don't want to do that. And voila, we've created our aura, I mean our perk. Let me change the name because that's actually a bit confusing here. <laughs> hmm. After saving this in the editor, you'll see here to the right hand side the effects of what you created. So you see the name, the icon, um, the cooldown, if it's a passive, it's an active, etc., and the effects of it. And here you would see the description, but we have not assigned. Okay, perfect. And now we also want to create an ability. So I'm going to go here, mark this as finished. I'm going to move a bit quicker through this since we already did the same thing with the perk. So the ability is gonna be shouting. We're gonna shout. You can add a description, secondary description. We want to change this to ability. Oh, there we go. Since it's something we're gonna be using actively. Again, the rarity doesn't matter since we're gonna to be assigning it to ourselves from the beginning. We're gonna set the cooldown to three seconds because I want it to be OP. We're not gonna touch anything else. Unique pipeline. It can't be used while stunned. And no, that's perfect. That's all we need to do here. So like I said, this would be a trigger input because you need to input something. We're going to ignore the charges on this. We don't need to ignore the cooldown because we have a cooldown. Since it's a trigger input, what matters is the input. So this trigger condition logic doesn't apply here. We'll leave that at true. Okay, so we are screaming. We're gonna assign the particles of, let's think. I'm gonna assign these particles. I'll assign the safeguard effect or the battle cry effect. That one looks really cool. So I'll add that one. And what do we want this ability to do? 
Mm. Oh wait, I should assign an icon. I'll assign an extension here. Or yeah, it doesn't really matter what you assign. And in the future, you'll be able to import whatever you want. If you want some anime models, you can do that. Okay, we'll put that there. And let's say, oh, there's so many things. Let's say this will kill all entities around us. That's, that's perfect. So target, no, no, wait, all enemies. <laughs> Otherwise we'll kill our allies as well. All enemies in a 30 radius. Oh, by the way, these units are like meters and the game uses realistic measurements. So the Android is about one meter 80. And here we just put in 30 meters. So that will help you gauge how much you want to make things. And below health percentage of 100. Okay, so that will kill everything. No, wait, we'll put it at 50 so it's more balanced. So when we use this ability, it would show these particles and it will kill any entity in, in a 30 meter range when they're below 50% health. And just to spice it up a little bit more, we'll add a sound to this as well. So when this plays, we'll add the attacking sound. Yeah, I like that. You can always use this play stop as well to hear the sounds before you put them in as a small preview. Actually, I'll go with the rifle police. It sounds perfect. We'll put the distance here at 1,000 units because I'm a Chad and I don't want everybody to hear it. The volume at one, this means 100%. And max voices at one. Max voices means how many of this, how many of these types, same type of noise can play at the same time. So if, I don't know, everybody pick Chad and everybody use this ability at the same time, you would only hear this sound up to one time, for example. We're gonna put it at three in case our co-op friends want to play chat as well. All right, perfect. So we got our based perk and our shouting. Here, we would go back to our player class. We go to our abilities and we assign here any of the abilities we've done personally in the game or our new ability, shouting, perfect. Here, we're going to leave it at level zero because we want the player to start with this perk. And we're going to give this to him. Yeah, the base perk. That's perfect. By the way, all other perks you see here or actions, because this shows all actions, you can see in the game right now. And you'll also be able to see them in the editor in the future. Don't worry. We, the developers, use this as well to do everything inside of the game. Perfect. So if we go back to the game, we go to game here, we go to class, we go to swap, we want to pick our engineer. Here's the ability. The perk is invisible as of right now. Here you can see it now. Health regeneration 100%. We can choose from the guns we assigned. So we'll pick the MP70 marrow and let's play. And this is because of what I assigned earlier as the Chrono Trooper icon. You can assign anything you want here or upload your own stuff in the future. Let's start. It's loading, it's loading. I'm excited, I'm excited to play chat. It's what I've always wanted to do. Okay, so as you can see, I'm chat inside of the game. I'm playing as the sniper. I have the MP70 Maro equipped, not only at the bottom right hand side, as you can see here, but also on my player character. I have the damage effect on top of me. I have my passive perk. And I have my ability shouting. I don't have a dash because I didn't assign myself one. But if I were to engage here and use my shouting, it would kill the enemy. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. Oh, it killed everybody in a 30 meter radius. Okay, that's pretty much it for the introduction to modding. 
like I said, this is a pro provisionary video. If you have any questions, Discord, Synthetic Universe, let me know. And I hope you guys enjoy this and have fun with this. See you all in the future.